to solve it, the technique we're going to use is called equivalent transformation. By, okay, this means by transformation, the new equation, equation has the same solutions compared to the original one. but is much easier to solve, okay? Uh, the key point is to merge all the, oh, excuse me, the general form of the one variable linear equation is ax plus b equals Zero, right? This is the general form. Okay, to solve it or to transform the original equation to this form, the key point is to merge all the one order terms, right? So this is the main topic in this chapter. Or sometimes it is not so obvious that the equation is a linear equation. Sometimes we have a quasi one variable linear equation. Okay. By quasi, I mean the equation may not look like a linear equation, but in essence, it is a linear equation, okay? The technique we are gonna use to solve these, quest, uh, these equations is called substitution. By substitution, you can use a letter U or W or Y, what else you like to substitute the terms that, do, that does not look like linear, okay? Um, We'll have a look at these questions later in this assignment. All right, okay. So let's start from the simple ones. Okay, question one to question 10. These are the simple ones. Okay, the solutions is quite obvious. Okay, for example, for question one, this is a simple one variable linear equation. So the only thing we need to do is to merge Okay, again, the only thing we need to do is to merge all the one other terms. And the coefficients and the constants. Okay, here, minus three, seven, and minus 4.5 are all the constants, right? So we can merge them, okay? We can put minus three to the right-hand side of the equation, right? Okay, by putting it on the other side, minus three becomes positive three. Okay, so here y is seven minus 4.5 plus three, which is five point five, right? Okay. Question two. The constants are one third minus three and uh, two thirds. So we can merge them to the 
left hand side of the equation because x is already on the right hand side right hand side of the equation right so here we put two thirds to the left hand side of the equation and a positive two thirds becomes negative two thirds right so the result is x equals minus 10 over 3 right okay the main techniques or the main takeaways here if you have something like a equals b when we add something to both the right hand side and the left hand side for example k the new equation has the same solutions than the original one right okay so similarly when you have an equation like a equals b when you minus a with k and uh, b with the same thing the new equation is equivalent to the original one right okay and uh, if you have something like a and b you can also multiply a with with a k and b with the same thing new, usually the new equation has the same solutions with the original one right but be careful with some corner cases you have to verify if your solutions are the are indeed the solution to the original equation okay i'll see that later okay another one is when you have the original equation like a equals b you can divide a use a k and divide b with the same thing okay so this new equation has same solutions with the original one okay yeah let's see the next one next one y over three equals two over nine okay first of all we can uh for both sides of the equation we can times uh we can time a nine right time a nine to both sides of the equation that gives us 3y equals 2, right? And then divide it by 3 to both sides of the equation, which gives us y equals 2 over 3, right? Okay, so this is a common technique when we solve an, a linear equation like this. Or you, if you are very familiar with this technique, actually this technique is also called cross multiplication method right so when you have something like y over 3 equals 2 over 9 automatically you can rewrite this equation in the cross product form which is 9y equals 2 by 3 this gives you y is 6 over 9, which is 2 over 3, right? You can use either way to solve it, whichever, whichever you like. Okay, any questions? No? Okay, next one. Minus 3x over 8 equals minus 6. So usually we don't like the minus sign here, right? So First of all, we can try to cancel these minus signs. We can times minus one to both sides of the equation. This can cancel both of the negative signs, which gives us 3s over 8 equals 6, right? Okay. And then we can use a cross multiplication method. It's 3s over 8 equals 6 over 1, right? By cross multiplication, this gives us 3s equals 80, uh, 48, right? So s is 16. Okay, any questions? No? All right, next one. Okay. All right, uh, next one. 
x minus 1 over 3 equals 5 over 1, right? So again, by multiplication method, this gives us x minus 1 equals 5 times 3, right? So the result is you can put minus 1 to the right-hand side of the equation. This gives us 15 plus 1, right? Pay attention to the sign here. This is a minus. And when you put it to the to the other side of the equation, it becomes plus one, right? Because in essence, actually you add one to both sides of the equation. Okay, so the final result is 16. Okay, any questions? No, so far so good. Oh, question six. Okay. As I said, you can divide both of the uh, both sides of the equation with a uh, three, right? So the left hand side becomes r minus five. The right hand side of the equation becomes eight, right? So this new equation has the same solutions with original one. Okay, so this gives us that r is eight plus five, which is 13, okay? And uh, I recommend you that always verify your result. by inserting your solution to the original equation. Okay, if you are not so sure, just insert 13 to the original equation. The left-hand side is three times 13 minus five, which is three by eight, which is 24, right? So next check the right-hand side of the equation, which is 24, okay? Right-hand side is always 24. So this means that this result is correct, okay? So the takeaway is here is, if you're not so sure about your solution or your method, always try to verify your result by inserting your solution to the original equation. Okay, especially when you have some kind of weird solution, okay, such as a very large number or a very uh, a unusual uh, fractions, something like that. Something you don't think is normal, okay? You can always put it back into the original equation. Understand? Okay, next one. Find A if X is find a if x being 3 is a solution to the equation x over a is 7. Okay, if x being 3 is a solution to the equation, that means if I insert this result into the original equation, the equation can hold, right? Okay, so if we put x is 3 to this question, this gives us 3 over a is 7, right? Okay, next, this is actually three over a is actually seven over one, right? So by cross product method, this gives us seven a is three, right? And then this gives us a is three over seven. Okay, any questions?
No? Okay, let's see the next one. Next one, also it is a simple one variable linear equation. So all we need to do is to combine all the one order terms together and all the constants together. So you can either put 5r to the left hand side of the equation or to put the minus 2r to the right hand side of the equation. Okay, you can try both methods and see which one is uh, looks easier. Okay, if we if we put 5r to the left hand side of the equation, this gives us minus r minus 5r, right? Equals 17 minus 4, right? Again, pay attention to the negative signs here. If we put something into the, the other side of the equation, the positive sign becomes a negative sign. And if you put the negative term to the other side, the negative term becomes a positive term. Okay, so next step is minus r min, minus 7r equals 14, right? And then we can divide both sides of the equation with minus 7, which gives us r is 14 divided by minus 7. This gives us minus 2, right? Oh, sorry, uh, I made a mistake. Seven, 17 minus four is 13, not 14. So the solution is not an integer, but a ratio, which is minus 13 over seven, right? Okay, let's look at the method two. Okay, this time, okay, this is the original equation, right? So this time we put minus two R to the right-hand side of the equation, okay? Let's see what will happen there. Okay, uh, at the meantime, we put uh, 17 to the left-hand side of the equation. So this becomes four minus 17 equals seven R, right? That means minus 13 equals 7r. This gives us r is minus 13 over 7, which is minus 13 over 7. Okay, so both of the methods are fine. You can choose whichever you like. Personally, I like the second one because I don't like negative signs as a coefficient. So Usually I will put minus two R to the other side of the equation. This gives me a positive coefficient here, which is less likely for you to make mistakes. Okay, that's my personal preference. Okay, let's see the other one. Uh, question nine, okay, again, to solve this equation, we need to merge all the one order terms and all the coefficients and all the constants, okay? For the one order terms, we have 2.3y and 1.7y. So usually I prefer to put the smaller term to the other side of the equation. So this gives me 2.3y minus 1.7y. And at the same time, Put the constant four to the other side of the equation. This gives you minus 20 minus four. Okay, pay attention here, positive four becomes negative four if you put it into the other side of the equation. Okay, so the left hand side becomes 0 0.6y and equal to minus 24. Right? Okay, so next 
In order to solve this, actually, it's better to change it to a fraction form. Minus a 0.6y is actually 3 over 5. Why? Because 0.6 is 6 over 10, right? 6 over 10 is actually 3 over 5. Okay, 3 over 5y is minus 4. Okay, in order to solve y, we need to times the reciprocal of the ratio, right? Which is 5 over 3. And at the same time, times the same number, which is 5 over 3, to the right hand side of the equation. Okay, and uh, left hand side becomes a y. Right hand side becomes minus 40, right? So this is our final solution. Do you understand? Any questions? No? Okay, so the takeaways here is if you have something like this, you want to try, if you want to try to solve x, you can always times the reciprocal of x coefficients, right? So these two cancels with, with each other, and then this gives you the solution for x, right? Okay, no questions? Okay. Let's see question 10. Okay, question 10, again, in general, we need to combine all the one other term, right? That means we need to move t over four to the left hand side. But note that this gives, this will give us a minus coefficient, right? Which we don't like, so we can put minus two to the right hand side of the equation. And at the meantime, put minus 12 to the left hand side of the equation, right? But another problem is that when you try to combine all the one or the term, you have both integer and ratio coefficients. So this will complicate the problems. So first of all, for me, if I see an equation like this, I can time both of the both sides of the equation with a four to eliminate the ratio. Sounds good. Time both of both sides of the equation with a four. Then what what will you get? You will get, okay, let's write it down, four times, and four times right-hand side. Okay, why do we choose a four here? Because four is the least common denominator of these two, right? Okay, so by distributive laws, for the left-hand side of the equation, we will have minus eight T, right? And then plus four cancels with two, leaves us a two times a three, which leaves us a six equals, okay? Again, we're gonna use the distributive laws, which gives us T minus four times 12, right? Four times 12 is 48. Okay, and now this time, all the coefficients and constants are integers, which looks nicer, right? So next, we can put minus a t to the right-hand side of the equation, which gives us t plus 8t. 
and at the meantime, put minus 48 to the left hand side of the equation plus 48, right? This gives us 9t equals 54, right? And uh, the final result is t equals 54 over 9, which is 6. Understand? Do you have any questions? No? Uh, can I move on? All right, uh, next one, question 11. Okay, again, when you have a ratios, first of all, you can try to make the ratios to integers, right? So by observation, we can find that the least common denominator of these two ratios is four. So we can time both sides of the equation use a four, right? Okay, let's see what will happen. Okay, for the left-hand side of the equation times a four, which gives us this. Okay, right-hand side six times a four, right? Times, a, uh, times the same number to both sides of the equation gives us an equivalent, equivalent equation. So all we need to do is to solve the new equation, okay? And by distributive laws, we can expand the left-hand side, right? This is the first term and this is the second term. Okay, we distribute this four to the two terms in the brackets which gives us, okay, I'll write one more step for you here, okay? Four times the first term plus four times the second term equals six by four is 24, okay? Next, four and four cancels with each other. So this leaves us nine minus two y plus Four and two here cancels with each other, which leaves us a two, right? Two times y plus two, which gives us two y plus four, right? Equals 24. Okay, next, minus y and uh, positive y cancels with each other. So the left hand side becomes 13 and the right hand side becomes 24, right? So here means no matter what the value of y, the equation cannot hold. This is the correct thought. So no solution. This is the final result. Okay. You, of course, you don't have to write these. You can make the conclusion that there is no solution for this equation. Okay, understand? All right, let's see the next one. Okay. Question 12, again, there are ratios, right? You can directly expand it, or first of all, if you don't like ratios, just try to cancel them, okay? By observations, the uh, least common denominator is, of course, five, right? So we can time both, uh, both sides of the equation with a number five, okay? 
So the left hand side, we have five times the two terms. Right hand side, we have five times two times y minus nine. Okay, so next step is where you can easily make a mistake, okay? By distributive law, we have five times three, right? Minus five times eight minus two y over five, right? This is distributive law. And right hand side, we have 10 times y minus nine, right? Okay, next three by five is 15. And the five, five cancels with each other. But remember here we have a negative sign. This is why we practice a lot in the previous assignments, right? If you have a negative sign here, everything in the brackets after the negative sign changes their signs, right? Okay, I'll write one more step for you. This is 15 minus eight minus two y, right? This is the correct form. Dora, I think you have mis make, made a mistake here. Can you see that? 15 minus brackets eight minus two y equals, okay, extend right hand side 10 y minus 90. Any questions to this step? Okay, no, no problem. Okay, we can proceed. Next step is to expand all the terms, right? 15 minus eight, okay? And you remove the brackets. Remember that you have a minus sign in front. So the minus sign here becomes plus two y right, and um, equals 10 y minus 90. And then combine all the one, one of the terms and all the constants. We can put 2y to the right hand side of the equation and minus 90 to the left hand side, okay? 15 minus 8 is 7 plus 90 equals 10 y minus 2 y is 8y, right? So that means 8y is 79. This gives us y is 79 over 8. Okay. Do you have any questions? Okay, this is our final solution. No questions? Nine, what do you mean? 97. Oh, yes, 97. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Not 79. Yes, you're right, Emily. Thank you. 97 over 8. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Okay, section 2. Any any more questions? No? Okay. Uh, as I said, section 1 is basically the simple one variable linear equations. I think you have done well. Uh, section two is more complex ones. Okay, by first glance, they don't look like one variable linear equation, but actually they are. They are quasi one variable linear equation, right? So the method to solve them are actually the, uh, the same. So let's have a look at them. Okay, 
first one, okay, let's try to combine as much as possible. Two over X, one over X. These two can be combined together, right? This gives us two plus one over X. And then we can put minus three over five to the right hand side of the equation. Okay, equals one over five plus three over five, right? So next step, we have three over X equals four over five, okay? And at this step, you can see that we can try to solve this equation by using the cross multiplication method, right? This gives us use a different color. Okay, this gives us three times five equals four X. So X here is 15 over a four, right? So this kind of equation, they are not actually linear equation, but the method to solve them is very similar to what we have used in the linear equation, right? Okay, next one, if you don't have any questions. Okay. Note that we can combine these two terms, right? Or if it's not that obvious to you, you can also use substitution method. Okay, I'll write it here. Substitution. Uh, what does this mean? You can always substitute the complex terms to the ones you feel comfortable. And then Try to solve. Okay, for example, you can use uh, letter U to substitute the ones you don't feel very comfortable. So here, following this principle, we can use a letter U to substitute which one you don't like. Okay, we don't like radical signs to let U equals square root of two R. Okay. So the original equation becomes four minus, okay. Square root two R now is U, right? Equals, okay, square root two R is actually U minus six, okay? If you can solve U, you know the value of U. If you know the value of U, then you can solve square root two R, right? Okay, so this means we can put u to the right hand side of the equation. This gives us two u equals 10, right? Okay, this means u is five, right? Okay, when you, when you know u is five, that means square root two r is five, right? Because u is square root two r. Okay, so this means two r is 25, right? Because Square root of 25 is five. Okay, so this means R is 25 over two, right? So this is called substitution method. We substitute square root to R using U. And when you saw the value of U, you will know that the value of R, you understand? 
And actually, if you have done this a lot of times and you are familiar with this, you can see that at the first glance that these two terms can be combined together, okay? So method two, I'll write it here, okay? Method two, you can directly put minus square root two r to the right hand side of the equation. This gives you square root two r plus square root two r equals put minus six to the left hand side of the equation, right? So this means twice of square root two r is 10 and uh, square root two r is five, right? So of course, two r is 25. And this also gives you r is 25 over r, over two, okay, understand? You can choose either way. If you if you are not familiar with this method yet, you can use the first method. Or if you are very familiar with this, you can directly directly combine these two terms. Okay, understand? Any questions? No? Okay. Let's see the next one. What? I'm sorry for that. Okay, next one. Okay, note these two terms actually can be combined together, right? But if you are not familiar with it, let's use substitution, okay? You can use a letter U to substitute this complex term. Let U equals this very complex expression, okay? And uh, the original equation such as we denoted as a star. The original equation is actually equivalent to 12 plus two u, right? Because u is what's in the circle now. We substitute this complex expression using a u now. Okay, minus nine equals, what is the term here? Of course, it is a U, right? Because we have substituted with a U. So next, when you solve the value of U, and then you can solve the value of x, right? So this, equ this is equivalent to, we can put this u to the left-hand side of the equation. This gives you, u is actually minus three, right? Is that correct? Okay, this means So what is u actually? u is my, uh, two minus x, to the one fourth power, right? This means this expression is actually minus three. So is there any solution to this? The answer is there is no solution. Why? Because when you have a number here raised to the one fourth power, this is always above zero. It cannot be negative, right? 
Do you understand? Any questions? Okay, so the final result is no solution. Any questions? No? Okay, let's see the next one. Question 16. Okay, uh, we can put 2 over x to the right-hand side of the equation and minus 4 to the left-hand side of the equation, right? So this gives us 5 plus 4 equals 5 over x plus 2 over x. Okay, next step, 9 equals 7 over x, right? So x is 7 over 9. Sorry, this is, there is a mistake here. This sign here is not plus. This should be a negative sign, right? Because two over X is positive. When you move a positive term into the other side of the equation, it becomes a negative, right? So this means nine equals three over x. So x is three over nine, which is one third. Any questions? Hello, no questions? Okay, next one. Okay, x one, uh, next one. For the left hand side of the equation, these two terms has have common denominators, right? So we can combine them. One plus two x over x minus one equals five, right? Okay, next equals five. Five is actually five over one. Next cross multiplication. Okay, by using the cross multiplication, we get one plus two x times uh, times one equals five times x minus one, right? And then expand, expand and merge. which gives us one plus two X equals five X minus five, right? And then we can put two X to the right hand side of the equation and minus five to the left hand side of the equation, which gives us one plus five equals three X. That means three X is six which means x is 2, right? Any questions? No, we're okay. Are we okay? Okay, let's see the next one. Question 18. For what value of b is x being three is the solution to the equation? bx squared plus three x minus two b equals zero, okay? It tells you that x being three is a solution. So that means 
Okay, because X3 is a solution. Okay, that means when we put X3 to this equation, the equation code, which is B times three square plus three times three minus two B is zero, right? Okay, so this means nine B plus nine minus two B is zero. Okay, this means seven B plus nine is zero, okay? And if you want to solve B, you need to put nine in the other side of the equation, which gives you seven B is minus nine, right? So that means B is minus nine over seven. This is what you want to solve, right? Any questions? No? No question, right? Okay, uh, next one. Next one, by first glance, there is R square. It seems that it's not a linear equation, right? Mm, let's try to, uh, let's try to merge similar terms first and see what we'll get. Uh, we can put the positive R to the right hand side of the equation, which becomes a negative R, right? Okay, so this gives us three R squared is 27 plus three R minus two R minus R, right? Okay, 3R minus 2R minus R is zero, right? So that means we have 3R square is 27. Okay, this means R square is actually nine, right? And this is what you want to solve. R square is nine. You know R square is nine. What is R? Can you tell me? This is where you can easily make a mistake or miss something. So, so could R be three? Of course it can be, right? Because three raised to the second power is nine. Could R be minus three? What do you think? Which one is correct? or both of them are correct. What do you think? Are they both correct? Yes, so pay attention to the second solution. You can easily miss this. So the takeaway is here, if you have something uh, like x raised to an even power is a positive number. So something like, uh, for example, one, let's write all the square numbers, perfect squares for nine, 16, or 25 or 36 or something like that, as long as they are above zero. So how many solutions are there? Can you tell me how many solutions are there? Two, right? One is positive and the other one is negative, but their absolute values are the same, right? 
Okay, so next time, just make sure you don't miss anything here. Okay. All right, next one. Okay, uh, it seems that it's not a linear equation, right? So first of all, let's simplify as much as possible first. And then let's have a look uh, how we can solve this. Okay, so first step, try to simplify. Okay, how to simplify? First term, you can do nothing, just copy it. Okay, next term, you have actually 16 to the one fourth, not plus, be multiplied by y to the one fourth, right? And uh, you can put minus two to the right hand side, which gives you a six. Okay, so 16 raised to the one fourth. What is the number here? This should be two, right? Because two raised to the fourth is 16, right? So if you want to find the fourth root of 16, of course, it should be two. Okay, so this means now you have plus twice of this term equals six, right? And then you can combine these two terms, right? One times this term plus two times the same term, you can combine this to three times uh, fourth root of y equals six. And of course, this gives you fourth root of y equals how many? Two, right? So when you have a fourth root of y is two, what is y? y is, of course, two raised to the fourth right which is 16. Okay. Do you have any questions? No? Okay let's see the next one. No question? Okay, next one, note that these two ratios have the same denominator, right? Okay, same, I'll write it here. Same denominator. So, so we can add them first, right? This gives us actually three plus four over the same denominator equals one, right? Equals one, one is actually one over one. Okay. Why I want to write one in a fraction form? Because I want to use the multiplication method, cross multiplication method, right? So when you have an equation like this, by using the cross multiplication method. You can get three plus four times one equals one times two plus square root of y, right? So the left hand side now is seven. The right hand side is two plus square root of y, right? 
So this gives us square root y equals how many? Of course, five, right? Okay, when you have a number, the square root of a number is five. What is this number? Of course, this number should be five raised to the second power, right? Which is 25. Any questions? Any questions? No, okay. Next one. Okay, note that these two denominators are different, okay? If you have different denominators, find the least common denominator. And then you can combine them, right? Note that t minus two and two minus t, the only difference is a minus sign. So if you want to combine these, you can convert either of them to the opposite number, okay? For example, we can convert 2 minus t to t minus 1. So what we can do here is copy the first term. Okay. As I said, you want to convert 2 minus t to t minus uh, 2 minus t to t minus 2. That means you need to times minus 1 to both of the numerator and denominator, right? Okay, this gives you and now the second term becomes minus nine over t minus two, right? So in this step, we have the same denominators now. So now we can combine these two terms, which is 12. Okay, 12 is actually 12 over one, right? 12 over one. And then we can use the cross multiplication method, which gives you 12 T minus two equals minus six. Okay, so that means t minus two is minus one over two, right? And then we can solve t is actually two minus one over two, which is three over two, correct? Any questions? Any questions? No? Can I proceed? Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, next one, the rule we are going to use is when you have an expression square root of a minus uh, divided by square root of b, 
can rewrite this as square root of a over b, right? Okay, so first of all, we can put them under the same square root. Okay, do you understand this step? Sorry, this is not nice. Uh, three. So why do we want to rewrite this in this form? This is because when you have something, the square root of something is three. So what is the value of this thing? Should be nine, right? Okay, so this means a whole bunch of these inside the radical sign Here, okay, I copied from the previous step. What is this value? The square root of this thing is three. So what is this thing? It should be a uh, nine, right? Understand? Any questions? No? Okay. Nine is actually nine over one, right? Next, we can use the uh, multiplication method, a cross multiplication method. This gives you, okay, one times three plus cube root T equals nine times three minus cube root t, correct? And now we can expand both sides of the equation. This gives you three plus cube root t equals, okay, by distributive law, you need to assign the number nine into the two terms in the brackets, which gives you 27 minus nine times cube root of t, right? And then what should be the next step? Of course, you can combine these similar terms here and combine the constants here, right? Okay, usually we don't like minus coefficients. So let's put minus nine in the left hand side of the equation and put a three to the right hand side of the equation. This gives you 10 times of cube root of T equals 27 minus three. Correct? Okay, so this means cube root t is 24 over 10. 24 over 10 is actually 12 over 5, right? So you know that the cube root of a number is 12 over 5. What is this number? Of course, this number is five over uh, 12 over five raised to the third power, right? Actually, you can also rewrite this in a fraction form, which is 2.4 raised to the third power, right? And then you can calculate this actually manually or Mm, okay, manually is okay. Manual is okay. Manual calculation is okay for a number like 2.4. It's not that it's not that complex, right? So the final result is 
four. Any questions? Okay, I'll, I'll draw a zone for the very last last question here. Let's draw a segment line here. No questions? Okay, uh, let's see the next one. Next one actually, uh, for the left hand side of the equation is a ratio, right? And right hand side is three. Three is actually three over one, right? So in the first step, actually we can expand this equation using multi uh, cross multiplication. Okay, first step, step one, cross multiplication. Okay, which gives us one times square root x plus one plus square root x minus one and uh, three times again square root x plus one minus square root x minus one, right? Any questions for the first step? And can you see why we want to do this way, do it this way? Because in this way, in the next step, we can then combine something, right? Okay, next, let's expand everything in the equation. Again, you need to use distributive law on the right hand side of the equation. Right? Any questions to this step? No? Okay, next you can see that you can combine these two terms, right? You can put this term to the right-hand side of the equation. And uh, these two terms can be combined together. You can put the minus three times square root X minus one to the left-hand side, right? So this gives you Okay, I'll write one more step for you. Plus three times and uh, three times square root X plus one minus square root X plus one, right? Any questions to this step? No? Okay, next we can combine them. Left hand side, four, uh, four times of square root x minus one. Right hand side is twice of x plus one, right? So what's the next step? Next step, you can divide both of the equation with a two, right? Divide the right-hand side with a two and divide the, uh, divide the left-hand side with a two. And at the meantime, divide the right-hand side with a two. This gives you two times this term equals this term, right? What's next? Okay, 
you can put, you can divide both sides. Actually, you can both, you can divide both sides using this term, right? So this gives you two equals x plus one over square root x minus one, right? So square root x plus one over square root x minus one is actually, we can put them and there's a same square uh, root, right? Okay, so this means you have, a, a, you know the square root of something is two. That means this term is actually four, right? Because only the square root of four is two, correct? Okay, so next four is actually four over one, right? And next you can use multiplication method. And this gives you x plus one Oh, in large. This gives you X minus one. Okay, I'll change the color, make it highlight. Because we don't, we don't have enough space here. X plus one is four times X minus one, right? So this gives you X plus one is 4x plus 4, right? And this means 3x is 5. So what is x here? Of course, x is 5 over 3, right? This is our final solution. Any questions? Any questions? No? Okay. So uh, in the next assignment, we'll practice some uh, problems that you have committed mistakes. Okay. Uh, questions in the next assignment will be very similar to these assignments. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, now I'll upload these notes onto our Google Classroom. This is uh, lesson 11. Okay, the teacher's notes is in Google Classroom now. Okay, please do try to correct your mistakes and uh, update your error book. Okay, and uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, remember to download the new assignment tomorrow, okay? I'll try to upload it early tomorrow. And if you don't have any questions, uh, you can leave the class now. Have a good night.